Okay, so individual learning strategies. Well, as we, as I explained before, the learning is actually done by the individuals, by the employees, even though it is the organization that benefits from it directly. The individual learning strategies are basically driven by HR requirements, and these are expressed in terms of skills and behaviors that are required in order to achieve business goals. So the starting point to these approaches should be the provision of learning and development opportunities to all kinds of employees, taking into account the distinctions between learning and development made by uh, Peddler, Boydell, and Burgoyne, who see learning as being concerned with an increase in knowledge or a higher degree of an existing kill, skill, whereas development is more towards a different state of being or functioning. So remember, we already saw this uh, difference before. Sloman uh, pointed out that interventions and activities which are intended to improve knowledge and skills will focus on the learner, and emphasis will shift to the individual learner or team. And he or she will be encouraged to take more responsibility for their own learning. Now, an organization must make efforts to develop a climate which will support effective and appropriate learning. These interventions and activities will be part of an integrated approach to creating competitive advantage through the human resources in the organization. So what does an individual learning strategy need to cover? Well, it needs to cover, for example, how learning needs are going to be identified, the role of personal development planning and self-managed learning, the support that should be provided for individual learning in the form of uh, the organization providing guidance, coaching, learning resource centers, et cetera. So here we can see different kinds of uh, learning strategies. Um, this is training, but of course there is one aspect here that is specific to development and career. Well, we can see that uh, we can have um, development or education based on business trends. What are the business trends in our base in our uh, organization, and what are we going to need to pe to have people reskilled for in the future? Strategic thinking, leadership. <clears throat> change management, career planning, performance management, et cetera. And this brings me to the end, to the uh, final part of our uh, class today, which is specific to T and I shaped competencies. I'm sure that you guys have already heard about uh, T and I shaped competencies. They basically are a way of explaining different types of employees. And we can divide them into I, into I shapes, T's, and there's also dash shapes. I shaped people are people who have a very good and deep knowledge of a single type of discipline or skill. And they have hardly no or very little knowledge of things outside of that field. T shaped people could have good depth of knowledge and skill in one uh, discipline, but also have more superficial or a vague understanding or a reasonable understanding of other uh, skills in other disciplines. So we can see here, a dash shaped person basically is a person with a very wide horizontal but shallow, more superficial base of knowledge and they're not uh, specialized. This can be known as a jack of all trades, jack of all trades, master of none. I, I, I we could say that I, I'm a dash shaped person when we think of, I don't know, uh, DIY projects. I can paint my house, I can change a light bulb, I can um, drill holes to hang up uh, frames, but I can't renovate a bathroom. So we could say that I have base knowledge and skills for DIY projects. An I shaped person, as you can see, has a very very deep, very profound knowledge and understanding of a single discipline. Well, what could we say if we talk about home renovations, we could say, well, a plumber, a plumber has very wide, uh, has very deep understanding of everything that has to do with plumbing in the home and is very well skilled in that, but is not skilled in any other aspects of home renovations like electrical work, woodwork, etc. And a T-shaped person is a person who has a deep understanding of one specific aspect or field, but also a basic understanding of another. So this could be, for example, 
a home renovation uh, consultant who started off working as a plumber and so has a very, very good understanding of plumbing and everything that has to do with, um, with this field within home renovations, but has also, um, through collaborating with other professionals, also has a basic understanding of woodwork, of electrical work, et cetera. And so this person is now a consultant who uh, manages teams of people uh, to do home renovations. This would be a T-shaped person. And in terms of HR, T-shaped HR professionals have these kind of skills. More uh, base knowledge or skills of, for example, data. They understand uh, how to read data, apply, create, and communicate data into valuable information in order to help uh, influence decision-making processes. But don't ask them to, to retrieve the data from the big data systems. Don't ask them to create algorithms, et cetera. They also have business knowledge, uh, more, uh, shall we say, um, superficial knowledge of business. They are able to, uh, to translate the organization's mission, purpose, vision, et cetera. And they are able to create strategies, positioning, et cetera, into HR policies in order to best meet the business objectives, but don't ask them to create a financial statement. Don't ask them to negotiate um, expansion contracts with providers. Don't ask them to, um, I don't know, uh, review the supply chain and be able to determine what aspects of the supply chain are less cost-effective for us. They also have digital integration skills. They are able to leverage technology to increase efficiency and drive HR and business value, but don't ask them, for example, to be able to update servers in their organization. And they are people's advocates. They, are, uh, they have the ability to create a strong internal culture, communicate, have an open communication with um, employees and act as tr trusted champions and communications experts but they are not actually um, an advocate or an attorney. So of course, this is more basic knowledge. And however, they are very, they have a very deep and profound understanding of functional competencies. For example, they are specialists in a functional competency within that area. Um, and they are, they have a very clear understanding in the four core HR competencies as well. So this brings me to the end of this week's class. For next session, I would like you to read chapter 16 in our strategic HRM book and chapter nine and 10 in our HRM textbook. And you have a few online resources here that you can take a look at. Have a great week. Take care. Bye-bye.